Hello everybody, uh, in this video I'm going to talk about the temporal bone, which is very important uh, bone. This bone is belong to the neurocranial part of the uh, skull and uh, the details of this bone uh, we are going to discuss in a while. Temporal bone uh, is very important bone which is located uh, and it's connected with the uh, several bones. Anteriorly, it's connecting with the sphenoidal bone here. Posteriorly, is connected with the occipital bone here. If you remember, we had the uh, the jugular notch and intrajugular process here that at the uh, junction of the temporal bone and the occipital bone it uh, remain the uh, the jugular foramen here also it's uh, fusing with the parietal bone at the suture that we said that it's beveled and is a squamous suture so uh, the area or territory of the temporal bone you can see that is here it's marked by the blue line this is the anterior border separated from the greater wing of the sphenoid bone this is the posterior border which is separated from the occipital bone and here is the superior border which is separated by the parietal bone that you can see here uh, from outer side, if I turn it as an external surface, you can see the area of the uh, of the temporal bone, which is here. This is the squamous part of the temporal bone, and at the external base, you can see also those are the part of the temporal bone, including this part which is uh, petrosal part we are going to discuss. So all these parts, they are uh, part of the temporal bone. Temporal bone, it has three main parts. Some literature, they said it, they say it, that it has four main parts that I'm going to discuss. The very important part, which is here, and is, uh, looks like a pyramid, is called petrosal part or they call it as a separate bone which is called petrosal bone or pyramid or pyramis it's uh, it has a base that is directed toward the lateral side and posterior side and it has an apex that is directed ventrally and medially toward the sphenoid bone and uh, uh, we are going to discuss. Then we have the squamous part of the squamous part of the temporal bone. Here you can see the squamous part of the temporal bone. And uh, this squamous part it has this process that we are going to discuss. And the third part is this part, which is the triangular shape more or less and it's called tympanic part of the temporal bone. Uh, the fourth part that some literature they talk about this as separately is this part which is sometimes is called mastoid part but some literature also they talk it, uh, about the mastoid part as a part of the petrosal part. Concerning the petrosal part of the uh, the temporal bone. As we said, we have the base and we have the apex which is directed anteromedially. It has four surfaces. Four surfaces. This surface is called anterior surface or ventral surface. It's making a part of the middle cranial fossa, internal cranial fossa, the middle cranial fossa. This surface is posterior surface or dorsal surface, which is making a part of the 
posterior cranial fossa and at the base or external base if I turn this surface that you can see it's the inferior surface which is also sometimes is called basal surface of the petrosal bone we have another surface uh, which is called ventrobasal surface which you cannot see it here uh, we will uh, discuss about this surface ventrobasal surface uh, when we are talking about the sense organ the ear the middle ear the ventrobasal surface as a matter, a matter of fact is the surface which is uh, making the medial wall of the middle ear or uh, tympanic cavity and uh, is uh, covered by this bone which is called tympanic bone or the tympanic part of the temporal bone. Here I have the temporal bone, I have the left, temp the, uh, the, the right temporal bone, sorry, here. The right temporal bone, as I mentioned it here, we have the petrosal part. Here I have the squamous part. And here I have the tympanic part of the temporal bone. Concerning the uh, petrosal part or petrosal bone or pyramid or pyramis, we have, if it's located here, be careful always the apex, it must be toward medially and, and ventrally and anteriorly. So this bone is the right temporal bone. So it means that this surface is anterior surface, this surface is posterior surface, and this surface is the basal or inferior surface. The ventrobasal surface, we said that we are going to discuss in sense organ in medial ear. Okay, so the details of each surface. We are going to discuss about the anterior surface of the temporal bone. Uh, at the anterior surface of the temporal bone, you can see near to the apex a small impression. This is called trigeminal impression. Trigeminal impression is the place that the trigeminal ganglion or it has another name semilunar ganglion or it has another name ganglion gasseri or gasserian ganglion it's located here in the place which is called cavum trigeminale so it's is is located inside the duplication of the dura mater which is making a cavity which is called cavum trigeminale, trigeminale or trigeminal cavity and uh, it's, this place is the location of the trigeminal ganglion. Then, uh, if you go a little bit posteriorly, you will see uh, uh, an eminence, uh, some, uh, somehow the ball-shaped structure, uh, sometimes is very uh, well seen, in this case it's very good uh, to see, it's called arcuate eminence, Arcuate eminence here is the place that if I open this place, I will reach under that to the anterior or another name superior semi-circular circular canal uh, of, the, of the inner ear is located immediately under that. So the anterior or uh, superior uh, semi-circular canal is located immediately under this arcuate eminence. Then uh, the next part that is here, this area which is posteriorly toward the uh, arcuate eminence, this area is a thin area of the bone which is called tegment tympani. Tegment tympani it's uh, approximately is located at the border of the petrosal part and the internal surface of the or cerebral surface of the squamous part. Uh, it's making uh, posteriorly the roof for the uh, mastoid antrum 
And uh, in the middle here, the main important uh, uh, information is making a roof for uh, middle ear or tympanic cavity. And uh, anteriorly, it's making the roof for the uh, auditory tube, the bony part of the auditory tube. So all this thin part, it's called tegment tympani. In the middle, it's making a roof of the middle ear or tympanic cavity. Then, at this area of the, of the tegment tympani, we have two uh, small uh, opening and the groove. One is located medially, which is here, is called groove uh, for greater petrosal nerve, is located medially, and is starting as an opening which is called hiatus of the uh, greater petrosal nerve, and continue forward toward the foramen lacerum that I'm going uh, to talk. And lateral to that is a smaller groove, which is called groove for the lesser petrosal nerve, which is starting as an opening, which is called hiatus of the lesser petrosal nerve, and then it goes anteriorly toward the uh, foramen ovale that we were, uh, we were talking about uh, at the uh, sphenoid bone. So, this two structure is a part of the anterior surface of the petrosal part, is a part of the uh, tegment tympani also is considered. Uh, then another important structure at the anterior surface is uh, that here there is a border, there is a superior border, here you can see is a sharp border, which is separating the anterior border, anterior surface from the posterior surface. This is called superior border of the petrosal part of the temporal bone, and also it has another, uh, another name which is called uh, uh, pyramidal crest, or crista pyramidalis, or crista pyramidis, which is the place here, as you see, is the place, and here also, is the place for attachment of the structure which is called tentorium cerebelli. Tentorium cerebelli is the structure or is the, the duplication of the dura mater, which is uh, attaching here to the superior border or the pyramidal crest here and here and posteriorly. And in this case, if you remember, here we had the cerebellar fossa and above at the occipital bone we had the cerebral fossa. This tentorium cerebelli is dividing the cerebellar cerebellum from the uh, posterior lobe of the uh, brain, which is called the cerebral fossa. So, cerebrum from the uh, cerebellum from the cerebrum is divided by the attachment of this duplication of the dura mater to the pyramidal crest or superior border of the temporal bone, which is called tentorium cerebelli. And immediately uh, beside this uh, border, the sharp border, there is a groove. That you can see it here, and also I can show you here. So this is, once more, this is the superior border, and here, to the, to the anterior surface, there is a groove. Uh, this is called groove or sulcus for superior petrosal sinus. According to its name, here it pass the vein, uh, the intracranial vein, that we said that usually are called sinuses, and it's, uh, uh, it's called the superior petrosal sinus. It's passing here. So, uh, this is uh, all about the anterior surface. Here, uh, it's another uh, right temporal bone that I have, and maybe it's uh, better seen the structure at the anterior surface. Just for your orientation, here again, this is the superior border. Uh, this is the apex, this is the base of the pyramid, and this is the anterior surface, this is the posterior surface, and here is the groove for the superior petrosal sinus, and here the arcuate eminence, and uh, here is the tegment tympani, 
and uh, the Tegman Timpani anteriorly, you can see these uh, two, uh, two hiatus. One is medially, which is here, and it's called the hiatus for the greater petrosal nerve, which is directly uh, directed anteriorly as a groove of the pet uh, greater petrosal nerve, and it goes toward the foramen lacerum. And uh, the, the uh, lateral one, which is smaller, is the hiatus for the lesser petrosal nerve, which is continuing um, forward as a groove of the lesser petrosal nerve, and it's uh, going toward the foramen ovale. Regarding to the posterior surface of the uh, petrosal part of the temporal bone or petrosal bone, uh, which is here, this surface, once more, you can see the border between anterior surface and posterior surface is crista pyramidis or the pyramidal crest or superior border, which is, as a matter of fact, here uh, you can see uh, that this border is uh, uh, one of the border between the middle cranial fossa and the posterior cranial fossa that we are going to discuss uh, in the chapter of the skull as a whole. Uh, uh, here, at the posterior surface, the first structure that you can see, and it's, uh, it's, it's uh, very, uh, very clear, is seen, is this opening, which is called the uh, porus acousticus internus, or internal acoustic pore, which is, uh, if you go posteriorly, it's leading to the miatus, which is called miatus acousticus internus, or internal acoustic uh, miatus, uh, at the beginning of this uh, opening, uh, and uh, toward the posterior side, there is a fundus of the internal acoustic uh, miatus, that uh, uh, it's a very important structure. It's passing through this uh, opening, which is the cranial nerve number seven, the facial nerve, and the cranial nerve number eight, which is called vestibulocochlear nerve, and labyrinthal vessels. They are passing through this, uh, through this uh, opening, that uh, each of these uh, structure or the nerves, they have their own area that uh, in a while I'm going to uh, discuss, um, discuss the details of that. Uh, uh, then uh, immediately, posteriorly, again, this is the apex, so here is the base, so apex is anteriorly and medially, like this, and the posterior direction is this. So it means that posteriorly and above the internal acoustic miatus, you have a small fossa, which is called subarcuate fossa. This is the subarcuate fossa, this area. is the area that the same area that you had the arcuate eminence. At the posterior surface, you have the subarcuate fossa. Then below that, and a little bit posteriorly, you can see another structure here, which is called external aperture of the vestibular canaliculi, or uh, external aperture of the vestibuli aqueduct. Uh, this is a place that the duct, which is called endolymphatic duct, is uh, passing uh, through. So uh, uh, the uh, vestibular canaliculi, the external aperture, or the vestibular aqueduct, it's located here, that is the place for the endolymphatic duct. Then, uh, at the uh, um, posterior surface, if you are going and reaching to the basal or inferior surface here, again we have this border, which is called the posterior border of the uh, petrosal part of the uh, of the temporal bone. So once more, for your orientation, so the location of the bone is like this. So here is the anterior surface border, its superior border, then posterior surface, and then the inferior surface 
and the border is posterior border of the of the uh, petrosal part of the uh, temporal bone which is separating the posterior surface from the from the inferior surface immediately uh, beside the posterior border you can see a groove here very well seen is the groove for inferior petrosal sinus the inferior petrosal sinus it uh, has a, uh, the familiar name for you because uh, in the chapter of the occipital bone I said that there is a uh, sinus which is called or there is a vein which is called the inferior petrosal nerve which is from the anterior side it's draining to the to the uh, jugular foramen in the dorsolateral part to the superior bulb of the internal jugular foramen so in this case so since this one is the posterior border and this is the uh, posterior part of this posterior border this is the place which is called the jugular notch of the temporal bone and this jugular notch of the temporal bone with the uh, this part which is called intrajugular uh, process it's making and is fusing with the occipital bone and uh, my finger for example is a, 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 a occipital bone and uh, in this case between this jugular notch is remaining the foramen which is called the jugular foramen this place of attachment of the temporal bone that I'm going to show you here is the synchondrosis of the uh, sphenooccipitalis synchondrosis sphenooccipitalis or sphenooccipital synchondrosis at this place is the junction of the uh, the, uh, the uh, petrosal part of the temporal bone with the occipital bone. Vice versa, the other side we have, and uh, between this synchondrosis and uh, the jugular notch of these two bones, it's remaining the uh, jugular foramen that we uh, were discussed about this and is very important uh, uh, foramen. Uh, the other side. The anteriorly, we said that the, the petrosal bone it's, uh, jun is joining with the uh, sphenoid bone and uh, the junction is called sphenopetrosal uh, uh, synchondrosis and at this sphenopetrosal synchondrosis it's uh, remaining the irregular foramen, irregular foramen here which is called uh, foramen lacerum uh, again, we are going to discuss it uh, at the chapter of the skull as a whole. This foramen lacerum uh, in the life, at the, a life person, it's uh, covered by the cartilage and practically it doesn't pass any structure through the foramen lacerum. I know that some literature that they pass the greater uh, and lesser petrosal nerve, but uh, uh, it's not true the, uh, the alive person. So it is foramen, foramen lacerum, which is the irregular shape, and it's the uh, is formed between the junction of the pet anterior part of the petrosal bone and a sphenoid bone. Uh, it's covered absolutely by the uh, ligament, and it has a close relation with the opening of the. Uh, carotid canal that in a while I'm going to uh, discuss for you. So uh, this is uh, regarding the uh, posterior surface again uh, here I can show you this is the internal uh, acoustic meatus the opening is called porus acousticus uh, internus or the internal acoustic pore and uh, uh, inside is continue as a meatus and uh, uh, this meatus, it's uh, approximately uh, one centimeter behind, uh, approximately in this area, is divided uh, by the structure which is called uh, the transverse crest or horizontal crest to the superior part and uh, inferior part. And uh, uh, in this case, we divide this uh, area approximately one centimeter behind the uh, opening of the uh, internal acoustic meatus or porus acousticus internus uh, uh, we divide uh, according to this uh, transverse crest we divide this meatus to the uh, 
superior and inferior and uh, also uh, in a while I will explain you uh, what structure it has. We divide them to the four quadrant and each quadrant is the area for the uh, for the nerves that they are passing, it means the facial and vestibulocochlear nerve. Uh, uh, another structure we said again, so immediately behind the internal acoustic meatus, above here is the arcuate, uh, subarcuate fossa, and uh, below that in this area, you can see, it's the external aperture of the uh, uh, vestibular canaliculi or a vestibular aqueduct, uh, here it's the location. And then, if you go farther, here is the posterior border, the posterior border, and here is the jugular notch and intrajugular process, and then the jugular foramen, and then you go to the inferior surface or basal surface that I'm going to discuss. Uh, for better understanding the structure that they are passing through the internal acoustic uh, meatus, I'm going to draw uh, some scheme of the, <coughs> uh, of the meatus acousticus internus. So we said that this meatus is uh, obliquely is located and somehow it's the oval shape and uh, uh, approximately uh, at uh, one centimeter uh, behind the behind the porus acousticus internus, uh, in this region uh, there is a, a crest which is called transverse crest or uh, the horizontal crest, which is <coughs> dividing this uh, um, uh, meatus to the superior part, the superior part, and uh, inferior part. So <coughs> here is the cross section. If I draw the cross section of the uh, internal uh, acoustic meatus and this is the transverse uh, crest and, uh, and uh, subdividing it to the four quadrant so uh, the anterior and superior quadrant it's the area that the facial nerve is passing through so this is the area of the facial nerve, which is the quadrant which is located anteriorly and superiorly. So the facial nerve here is entering to the canal, which is called facial canal, and is very important. And this canal, it has three main parts according to its pathway that I'm going to discuss. Then under that, it's the area that it's called, it's the area for the cochlear nerve because we said that through the meatus acousticus internus it passed the cranial nerve number 7, fascia, the cranial nerve number 8, vestibulocochlear nerve that they have two parts, the cochlear nerve for the hearing and vestibular nerve for the uh, balance and equilibrium and the labyrinthal vessels. So the superior and anterior quadrant or anterior superior quadrant is the area for the facial nerve. The area for the cochlear nerve, cochlear nerve is the anterior and inferior quadrant. And here is the place that it's uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, perforated structure which is called uh, tractus spiralis foraminus, uh, it's the area that the cochlear nerve, uh, a part of the cranial nerve number 8, vestibular cochlear nerve is passing in. Then uh, the area of the posterior and superior, it's uh, the nerve which is the superior vestibular nerve because the vestibular nerve, the nerve for the uh, balance and equilibrium is subdivided to the superior and inferior. So the posterior and uh, superior quadrant is the area for the superior vestibular nerve and uh, the, the, the posterior and uh, uh, inferior quadrant is the area for the uh, nervous vestibularis inferior or inferior vestibular nerve. So this is the topography of the uh, internal acoustic meatus and the structure of uh, that they are passing through this. Okay, now we know that the area of the facial nerve. So the facial nerve, when it's entering to the internal acoustic meatus, 
it's entering into the anterior and superior quadrant, which is the area for the facial nerve, and is entering to the facial canal. Facial canal is inside the petrosal part of the temporal bone, and uh, this facial canal it has three main parts according to the direction that it has. The first part is the ventrolateral part that I'm going to show you. Then uh, the, the ventrolateral part till it reaches to the hiatus of the greater petrosal nerve. Then it's turning as a genu or geniculum of the facial nerve or genu. That it's continue as a second part like a dorsolateral part of the facial canal and then the third part is the descending part of the facial canal. So here, if you look at it, so if we cut, uh, it's a cross uh, section of the temporal bone and uh, in this region you can find the second part and the third part of the facial canal. So the first part that is the anterolateral part is starting from the area of the uh, of the facial nerve that we said that it's going through the internal acoustic meatus direct uh, toward the uh, toward the anterolateral until it reached to this point which is called the hiatus of the greater petrosal nerve in this place the hiatus of the greater petrosal nerve the facial canal is turning and is uh, continue as a dorsolateral part, which is the second part of the, of the uh, facial canal, and it's making a prominence uh, uh, inside the middle ear, which is called prominence of the, uh, of the facial, uh, facial canal. Uh, above this oval window or fenestra vestibuli that uh, I uh, will mention it again above the promontory and the fenestra ovalis, uh, oval window or fenestra vestibuli. So it's making a prominence of the can uh, canalis facialis and above that is the prominence for the lateral semicircular canal which is here is C is the prominence of the lateral semicircular canal and under that is the prominence of the of the uh, facial canal that is the second part or the posterolateral part so the anterolateral part that is from the other side is the starting the facial nerve is coming and it reached to the hiatus of the greater petrosal nerve and then it's making a turn to the posterolateral part and at this level that is the geniculum it's giving very important branch which is called the greater petrosal nerve that it's a, a very important nerve that we are going to discuss in the peripheral nervous system. Here, after the genu or geniculum of the facial canal, the second part is a starting which is directed toward the posteriorly and laterally. So the posterior and lateral, posterolateral part of the facial canal, which is here you can see is the middle ear. And uh, at the middle ear, you can uh, have this impression or the prominence, which is called making the prominence of the facial canal at the middle ear, the second part of the facial canal, which is the posterolateral part. And finally, the third part of the uh, facial canal, which is here, it's called the descending part of the facial canal. The facial canal is going down and it's exit from the skull, from the foramen which is called stylomastoid foramen, the foramen which is between the styloid process and mastoid process, is called stylomastoid process, and the facial nerve is exiting uh, from the external cranial base out of the, uh, out, out of the skull that we are going to discuss and I'm going to show you, show you this foramen. So, uh, three main parts of the facial canal, ventrolateral part, dorsolateral part, at the transitional of the first part and the second part is the genu or genu of the facial canal or geniculum, and then the descending part which is end up to the 
uh, style mastery foramen. So fascial nerve is entering into the internal acoustic meatus and it exits to the skull and it exits from the stylomastoid foramen uh, from the external base of the skull. So very important two additional information that you have to know that uh, here uh, I don't have it well but here at the descending part of the uh, facial canal the, uh, we have two structures. One structure that is above is called the pyramidal eminence. Approximately in this area, the pyramidal eminence is the bony structure. Uh, it looks like a pyramid, and inside this small bony structure or eminence, it's the uh, it's the muscle which is called the stapedius muscle. It's a small muscle in the uh, uh, in the middle ear or tympanic cavity, which is. Uh, has a very important uh, role and function for the regulation of the vibration of the tympanic cavity. So that's why if the facial nerve somehow it's become, we have the pareza of the facial nerve or injury or any trauma of this facial nerve or para pareza of this facial nerve, the stapedius muscle will not work and then the patient has the problem with the regulation of the vibration of the tympanic membrane and the, 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 the disease is called hyperacosis. These patients when they are talking with the mobile, so they don't put the mobile or phone uh, at ear so they make some distance from because it's making a pain uh, because of the disorder of the regulation of the, the tympanic membrane that in the nervous system we are going to talk. And the second structure and the descending part of the facial canal is the canaliculi of the corda tympani. It's approximately half a centimeter above the stylomastoid foramen is located and through this canaliculi of the corda tympani it passed the uh, branches of the facial nerve which is called corda tympani uh, which is coming out of the skull from through the petrotympanic fissure together with the anterior tympanic artery. Those are the important structures that you will need it in the case of the uh, peripheral nervous system. Okay. So here we have the inferior surface or basal surface of the uh, petrosal part of the temporal bone. Uh, just to uh, revise, here you had the posterior surface. The bone was like this. So anterior surface, superior border, posterior surface, and now we are turning it. Here is the posterior border, as we mentioned, and here is the group for the inferior petrosal sinus for the inferior petrosal sinus, the vein, and here we have the inferior or basal surface. At the inf and here if you look, here you have the inferior or basal surface. Uh, at this area or at this surface, you can see two very important structures. One is, which is anteriorly, is this opening or canal which is called carotid canal, carotid canal. Uh, through this carotid canal, it passes uh, an artery which is called internal carotid artery. It is the place that the internal carotid artery is entering to the skull. If you want to compare it here in the external cranial base, here you have the carotid canal here. Then, when the internal carotid artery is entering, then toward the anteriorly and medially, it means that toward the apex, the internal carotid artery is entering, then is turning 90 degree toward anterior side, and this part that this wire is come out, this part that the wire is coming out is the exit of the carotid canal that is going toward the foramen lacerum and toward the groove of the carotid uh, artery at the sphenoid bone. So uh, at the carotid canal it passed the internal carotid artery, it entering 90 degree it's 
turning forward and then it's coming as an exit of the carotid canal. Also parallel with the wall of this artery, uh, it passed the sympathetic plexus, the carotid sympathetic plexus uh, that is going to this canal. Uh, here you have the carotid canal as I mentioned and at the middle cranial fossa if I turn it I can show you the opening of the carotid canal which is at this area is the exit of the carotid canal at this area which is going toward the foramen lacerum that we said that is the irregular foramen and the carotid artery it's going to the uh, sinus or the vein which is here is the very important vein which is called cavernous sinus and then it's entered to the this groove that we mentioned it is the carotid groove at the uh, side of the body of the sphenoid bone here groove for the carotid artery here and then it continues so this is uh, one thing and the last thing concerning the uh, carotid canal. Inside the carotid canal uh, at the um, uh, to the middle ear there are two small openings which is or which, which are called uh, carotico tympanic canaliculi is inside this bony structure which is uh, the same name artery and uh, nerves they are passing to the middle ear or uh, tympanic cavity the carotico tympanic nerves and uh, sometimes artery also it's passing to the middle ear then the next structure that we have it at the uh, at the uh, uh, inferior surface of the uh, of the uh, petrosal bone is this fossa very nice you can see this is called jugular fossa jugular fossa this is if you look at the skull here, you can see here is the jugular fossa. And it's the place that the superior bulb of the internal jugular vein is located. If you remember, we had the place which was called the, uh, the jugular notch together with the, with the jugular notch of the occipital bone. And here is the place of the, of the uh, jugular foramen. So here is the jugular fossa the place for the superior bulb of the internal jugular vein and as you see if you continue uh, on my needle it going to the uh, jugular foramen the mainly the dorsolateral part that is the place for the internal jugular vein then <clears throat> we are going to discuss a little bit the uh, more detailed structure between the jugular fossa and carotid canal, there are two structures that one of them, which is here, and it's located more laterally. This is called the tympanic canaliculi. Sometimes is near to the fossula petrosa, which is lead to the tympanic canaliculi. Here it's the place for passage of the tympanic nerve and inferior tympanic artery that through this tympanic canaliculi they are entering to the middle ear or tympanic cavity uh, these two uh, structures, the uh, tympanic nerve and an inferior uh, tympanic uh, artery. The uh, lateral, this is the lateral one, the medial to that, it's this structure. This structure, it's called the external aperture of the cochlear canaliculi or cochlear aqueduct. The external aperture or apparatus of the cochlear canaliculi, sometimes just cochlear canaliculi. Here is the place for the perilymphatic duct, 
which is connected with the cerebrospinal fluid that we are going to discuss it in the sense organ in the ear section. So between the internal, uh, the carotid canal and jugular fossa, these two structures is important. One is the located laterally, which is the, uh, the tympanic canaliculi, and the other which is medially and is called the uh, cochlear canaliculi. Also another structure uh, that you can see here at the wall of the jugular fossa, there is uh, some uh, opening which are called mastoid canaliculi also. The mastoid canaliculi, it can be several. The, uh, through this mastoid canaliculi, it passes very important nerve, which is called auricular branch of the vagus nerve, which is the cranial nerve number 10. Auricular branch of the vagus nerve, it's passing through this mastoid canaliculi, and then it, <coughs> it exits from the, the, uh, the uh, uh, groove that is called the tympanomastoid. Tympanomastoid, I'm going to uh, show you later the tympanomastoid uh, 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 fissure that in a while I'm going to tell you. So the tympanomastoid uh, fissure is the place that the auricular branch of the vagus nerve is uh, coming out of the uh, out of the uh, skull. So uh, here we had the uh, uh, the mastoid canaliculi and the wall of the jugular fossa, and then the auricular branch of the vagus nerve. It's coming from the tympano uh, mastoid fissure, which is this area, tympanic bone and mastoid process. So tympano mastoid fissure. This is the place that the auricular branch of the vagus is coming uh, out and uh, clinically is very important if uh, any uh, heat in this area and um, uh, um, hitting this nerve, it can cause the secondary uh, syncope of the heart and uh, in some case it can uh, kill the uh, person. So uh, those are the structure that uh, we had it and the inferior surface of the uh, of the petrosal bone uh, or petrosal part of the temporal bone. And the additional structure that uh, we can find in this area is uh, this process, which is uh, broken here. It's approximately two two and a half centimeter. It has a length. Uh, I can uh, show you. Uh, here, this is called styloid process, which is coming or arising from the inferior surface of the petrosal bone. This is the styloid process. As we said, it's approximately two centimeter length. It's going caudally, inferiorly, it's coming. And uh, uh, through, from this uh, styloid process, uh, it's uh, starting or origin, uh, originating the uh, three muscles, the uh, styloglossal or styloglossus muscle, stylohyoid muscle, and stylopharyngeus muscle. The three muscle, styloglossus, stylohyoid, and stylopharyngeus muscle. From the tip of this styloid process also is originating the, uh, is the place for origin of two ligaments. The stylomandibular ligament is one of the ligament of the, uh, stylomandibular ligament is the one of the ligament of the temporomandibular joint indirectly. And another is the stylohyoid li ligament that in some uh, case it can be calcified uh, which is, uh, which is uh, clinically it can cause some uh, problem. So uh, this is uh, concerning the styloid process and uh, if I uh, show it to you here 
this is the broken styloid process and here in the skull if I want to show you is this one which is broken also and another process that I mentioned it that some literature or some people or some uh, reference they are uh, talking about this as a separate bone is this uh, large uh, process uh, that it's coming uh, inferiorly also is called mastoid process this uh, mastoid process uh, which is palpable also and you can see it here also it's uh, an important process uh, for the um, uh, origin or for the attachment of the muscle and the muscles that they are attaching to this mastoid process they are uh, part of the sternocleidomastoid muscle and the splenius capitis and uh, uh, these uh, two muscles they are attaching uh, this uh, to this mastoid process the uh, uh, also there is one muscle also uh, uh, sometimes is seen is longissimus uh, capitis muscle also is attaching to this mastoid process so uh, if you uh, consider the mastoid process uh, like this, so the medial to the mastoid process, here you can see the mastoid process, medial to the mastoid process you can see a notch. Here you can see very nice notch. This is called mastoid notch. The mastoid notch is the place for uh, origin of the posterior belly of digasteric muscle posterior belly of the digastric. Digastric muscle is the muscle that it has two bellies, the posterior belly and anterior belly. The posterior belly of the digastric muscle is originated from the mastoid notch. And then if you further we go medial, medially there is a groove and this is the groove for occipital artery. Groove for occipital artery. Here is better seen. If you look at it, this is the mastoid uh, process. This is the mastoid notch and this is the groove for occipital artery. Through the groove for occipital artery it passes the, uh, according to its name, the occipital artery. Then uh, immediately or somehow behind the mastoid, uh, mastoid uh, process, so at the junction of the mastoid process with the occipital bone, you can see one foramen here which is called mastoid foramen mastoid foramen through the mastoid foramen it pass emissary vein as we said emissary vein is the vein that is connecting the extracranial vein to the intracranial vein which is in this case the other part of the uh, mastoid foramen inside the skull uh, it is here, which is open to this groove, which is called groove for sigmoid sinus. So according to its name, here is passing the vein, which is called sigmoid sinus, and the emissary vein, which was uh, starting from the mastoid uh, foramen, it's open to this area, which is called the uh, sigmoid sinus, and here is uh, there is a groove of the sigmoid uh, sigmoid sinus and uh, the skull also you can see again uh, this mastoid foramen exactly you can uh, see the border between the occipital bone and the temporal bone uh, behind the mastoid process you can see this foramen which is called mastoid uh, foramen regarding the uh, uh, inferior surface when uh, since we are talking about the, uh, the uh, carotid canal we were talk, uh, talking about the carotid canal parallel with the carotid canal there are there is a, a, another canal that in this bone it's very nice scene for your orientation so again this is right temporal bone, anterior surface, superior border, posterior surface with the internal acoustic meatus, 
posterior border groove for the inferior petrosal sinus carotid canal jugular fossa and here we said that is the carotid canal interim entrance and the carotid canal exit and if I turn it more you can see here in this area a canal which is called musculotubal canal musculotubal canal the musculotubal canal or canalis musculotubarius is composed of two semi canals uh, the septum of the musculotubal canal or the canalis musculotubarius uh, it has a septum that is dividing this canal to two semi or semi canal one is superiorly and is smaller here and the other is inferiorly and larger so the yellow color and the purple color the purple canal the purple color the the, the wire that is going to the superior semi canal of the musculotubarius canal and is smaller and is above is called semi canal of or for tensor tympani muscle semi canal for the tensor tympani muscle the yellow wire that it's going to this canal it's the semi canal for auditory tube or semi canal for eustachian tube or semi canal for the pharyngotympanic tube they have three uh, three um, uh, terminology it's called the pharyngo pharyngotympanic tube or eustachian tube or it's called auditory tube which is connecting the middle ear to the nasopharynx so this is the musculotubarius canal or canalis musculotubarius between the styloid process which is here also it's broken and the mastoid process which is here there is a foramen very important foramen we already discussed about this is called stylomastoid foramen stylomastoid foramen is the place that the facial canal is end and the facial nerve it exit from the skull <clears throat> through this foramen is entering an artery which is called a stylomastoid artery as well so here go back to our skull uh, our temporal bone here is the styloid process here is the mastoid process and here is the stylomastoid foramen through the stylomastoid foramen it exit the facial nerve the cranial nerve number seven and it's entering to the skull the stylomastoid artery this is the place that the facial canal the third part which is the descending part of the facial canal is ended here <clears throat> and is very uh, very important regarding the is important regarding to the uh, mastoid uh, process uh, clinically is important because mastoid process it's uh, composed of uh, as you see here some air cells uh, they are called mastoid air cells it's formed uh, after the uh, two uh, two years of the age so uh, any surgical uh, intervention behind the auricle of the child less than two years it must be 
uh, uh, it must be uh, uh, pay attention to the exit of the facial nerve because the mastoid process it cannot protect it and it, you can damage the facial uh, nerve in this area. So the mastoid process is approximately is formed uh, at the uh, two years of the age. So uh, this is uh, all about the inferior surface. I just uh, do uh, the uh, revision of the uh, of the uh, this inferior or basal surface because it's a little bit complicated in the other bone to know. So once more, <clears throat> this is the another right temporal bone. This is anterior surface of the petrosal bone. Posterior surface of the petrosal bone, between them is the superior border. The posterior border, which is dividing the posterior surface from the inferior or basal surface. Here is the inferior petrosal uh, groove for the inferior petrosal sinus. Here you have the apex, here they have the base, here there is a carotid canal. Here you have the jugular fossa. Here, this is a small opening that you can see is the tympanic canaliculi. Medially here is the cochlear canaliculi. Here is one opening of the uh, mastoid canaliculi which is open, uh, which is the auricular branch of vagus. It's passing and it's coming out from the tympanomastoid fissure, the tympanomastoid fissure here. We said that is very dangerous. It can cause secondary uh, syncope of the heart through the heat of this area. Then uh, here we have the styloid process. Here is the mastoid process with the mastoid notch and the uh, occipital artery, groove for the occipital artery. And between them is this foramen which is called stylomastoid foramen. Posterior to that, it's, we said that it's the mastoid foramen that it passes emissary vein to the groove which is called the groove for the sigmoid sinus. The sigmoid sinus, uh, as we mentioned it here, you can see is a S shape sinus is the vein which is called uh, sigmoid sinus because of its S shape uh, um, uh, S shape and uh, structure and uh, here it leads at the end of the sigmoid sinus it leads to the dorsal lateral part of the uh, of the jugular foramen which is the place for the internal jugular uh, vein. Uh, so the sigmoid sinus, if you remember, uh, some part of the, this sigmoid sinus or groove of the sigmoid sinus, we had it at the occipital bone here. And here is the continuation of this uh, sigmoid sinus, which is important that the mastoid foramen is open here in this uh, area to the sigmoid sinus. So here you can see the groove for the sigmoid sinus at the occipital bone and here is the groove of the sigmoid sinus for the, uh, at the temporal bone. Uh, regarding the fourth surface of the petrosal bone that I mentioned that is called ventrobasal surface uh, which is uh, uh, making the medial wall of the, uh, of the tympanic cavity or middle ear uh, uh, and it's uh, uh, covered by the tympanic bone or tympanic part of the temporal bone. Here it means that we remove the uh, tympanic bone or tympanic part of the, uh, of the uh, temporal bone and we are looking from the lateral side to the medial wall of the uh, or internal or medial wall of the uh, middle ear which is called labyrinthal wall or tympanic cavity. Uh, here at this uh, surface you can see several structures, just short information for you because it's necessary to know it for the uh, sense organ and also the uh, middle ear. So uh, here the first uh, 
uh, structure is called a promontory. Promontorium or promontory. And uh, here you can see at the surface of the promontory, you can see a groove, which is called groove of the tympanic nerve. If you remember, the tympanic nerve is coming from the uh, tympanic canaliculi and it's entering to the middle ear and it's going on the surface of the promontory and they are making the impression uh, or groove, which is called the groove or the uh, tympanic nerve that here uh, they are receiving the corticotympanic nerve and they are making a tympanic plexus and from this plexus it's coming the uh, or continuing the lesser petrosal nerve that we will discuss it at the uh, peripheral nervous system. Uh, so, uh, one important information that you need is the promontorium or promontory and the groove for the tympanic, uh, <clears throat> tympanic nerve. Above the promontory and uh, behind there is a, uh, an opening which is called fenestra vestibuli or oval window and below that, that is not uh, seen uh, well here in this area, there is a, a fenestra cochlei or round uh, window. So those are the uh, important structure that you can see in the ventral uh, basal uh, surface of the temporal bone that they are making the medial wall of the uh, of the inner uh, the medial ear or tympanic cavity and is covered by the tympanic bone. Here, uh, as we mentioned it, here is the uh, dorsolateral part of the, uh, the second part of the facial canal and uh, it's making a prominence at the middle ear, so here it can uh, be seen. So those are uh, just a basic information regarding this uh, surface, uh, just to be familiar with this terminology, uh, that's why I mentioned uh, this information extra and uh, the details you will see in that uh, sense organ uh, of um, sense of hearing. Okay, so we discussed about the petrosal bone uh, or petrosal part of the temporal uh, bone and here we are going to talk about the uh, squamous part or the squama part of the uh, temporal bone. As you see uh, here, the uh, squamous or the squama part of the uh, temporal bone, it has two surface, the external surface and the cerebral surface that I'm going to show. Here is the cerebral surface and here is the external surface. So uh, at the uh, external surface, as, uh, if you uh, pay attention, sometimes you can find a very nice a groove, which is called the groove for the uh, middle temporal artery. And according to its name, the middle temporal artery is uh, passing uh, here and is making a, a groove uh, for the supplying of the temporalis muscle. Uh, also, the external surface here is the origin uh, for the uh, temporalis muscle, one of the masticatory muscle here in this region. Uh, regarding the uh, internal or the cerebral surface, uh, you can see another groove uh, that they are the groove for the branches of the middle meningeal artery, the anterior and posterior branches of the middle meningeal artery they are passing and they are making a groove for this uh, middle meningeal uh, artery. And uh, as we uh, mentioned it here also, you can see uh, that the uh, uh, squamous or squama of the temporal bone is uh, connecting with the uh, parietal bone at this suture which is called sutura squamosa or the squamous suture uh, that uh, as you see is not a sharp T-shaped suture so it's somehow beveled and uh, is uh, connected with the parietal bone. Uh, there is a very uh, interesting place here in this area as you see that this squamous uh, part of the temporal bone superiorly is connected with the parietal bone uh, posteriorly is connected with the uh, um, the uh, occipital bone uh, anteriorly here here it's connecting with the temporal surface of the greater wing of the sphenoid bone 
and also some part is connected with the frontal bone. So this uh, this uh, place, this place that the temporal bone or the squama is connected with the parietal, frontal, and the sphenoid. This four place is called pterion. Pterion is the connection of these four bones together. So the parietal, frontal, greater wing of sphenoid bone, and temporal bone. So here is the important uh, place which is called pterion. Then uh, from the squamous part of the temporal bone, it's coming uh, the process forward. You can see it here also. This process because it's connected with the zygomatic bone, which is here, and we are going to discuss, is called zygomatic process of the temporal bone. Zygomatic process of the temporal bone, it's connected with the temporal process of the zygomatic bone, and together, it's connect, they are connecting together and this, at this suture, which is called the zygomaticotemporal suture. Zygomaticotemporal suture, and they make this structure, which is called zygomatic arch, or, or uh, pons zygomaticus, or zygomatic pons. So, zygomatic arch is very important. Uh, for the traumatology because uh, one of the uh, place that it uh, might be uh, uh, broken during to the uh, trauma is uh, this region in uh, very important uh, in maxillofacial surgery. So uh, uh, the beginning of the zygomatic process of the <clears throat> temporal bone here you can see a ball shape tubercle, very important. This tubercle is called articular tubercle. Articular tubercle. This articular tubercle, sometimes the English terminology is called articular eminence as well, is uh, formed at the age of two when all the deciduous or milky teeth is erupting. So it means at the age of the two years uh, uh, two, at the two years uh, uh, of the age, it's um, uh, form the articular tubercle and it's the part of the articular facet for the head of the mandible together with this structure which is called mandibular fossa. They are making a articular facet for the temporomandibular joint. <coughs> then, uh, the, uh, at the squamous part of the temporal bone, you can see this fossa, which is called mandibular fossa, sometimes it's called glenoid fossa as well. It's the place uh, or socket for the temporomandibular joint. It's the articular facet together with the articular tubercle for the temporomandibular joint, and it's the uh, place that the head of the mandible it's articulating with the with this fossa and they are making a temporomandibular joint. So the importance of this uh, tubercle, the uh, articular tubercle, is when you are opening in maximum. It means that the depression of the mandible in maximum. So the head of the mandible is gliding and rotating forward, and uh, this articular tubercle is preventing it to um, further opening of the mouse. Usually, the maximum opening of the mouse, the distance between the incisors is approximately four centimeter. So, uh, at the maximum opening, this tubercle is stopping the abduction of the mandible or the depression of the mandible, it means opening of the mouse. So, some people that they have the problem with this uh, articular uh, tubercle, so if this articular tubercle it will be so much uh, 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 not prominence or uh, in some disorder this articular tubercle it will be more uh, more smaller so uh, these patients they have a problem in the maximum opening of the mouth suddenly the head of the mandible is come out from the uh, fossa 
and uh, it's caused the uh, uh, subluxation of the uh, head of the mandible out of the out of the uh, mandibular fossa. So <clears throat> this is the disorder of the temporomandibular joint. So that this uh, articular tubercle is important. Uh, sometimes also uh, in human being also you can see uh, another uh, tubercle which is called postglenoid tubercle. Uh, which is not that much prominent like the anterior one. Here is located the postglenoid tubercle uh, at the posterior part of the of the uh, mandibular uh, fossa. So uh, this is the this is the uh, the squamous part of the uh, temporal uh, bone, and uh, this squamous part of the temporal bone. If I uh, show you here. So uh, again, here is the zygomatic process, which is joining with the temporal process of the zygomatic bone, and they make the zygomatic arch. Here you have the uh, the uh, articular tubercle or articular eminence, and here you have the mandibular fossa or glenoid fossa, and here you have the the uh, the postglenoid uh, tubercle. So here, at the junction of the <clears throat> the uh, squamous part <clears throat> and uh, the <clears throat> tympanic part here uh, that we are going to discuss, there is a, a fissure which is called a squamotympanic fissure. And a squamotympanic fissure by the, if I turn it here, by the uh, tegment tympani that we mentioned it, that it was uh, at the <clears throat> anterior surface of the petrosal bone. So if you go and directly toward this place, you can see uh, and divide this uh, squamotympanic fissure to the other uh, fissure, two fissure, which is called petrotympanic fissure, the, the lateral one, and the petro, uh, petro uh, squamous fissure. Uh, that it's, they are very important and one of them that is very important is the petrotympanic fissure in this area uh, which is called gl glossarian fissure or fissura glossary uh, is the place that the uh, horda tympani which was the branch of the facial nerve uh, is coming out of the skull through this uh, fissure and also the anterior tympanic artery uh, also through this fissure it's uh, going to the middle ear or tympanic cavity so uh, once more at this area that the uh, the tegment tympani in anterior surface is going outside near to the area of the mandibular fossa here separating the uh, squamo uh, uh, tympanic fissure uh, to uh, the two fissure, one of them is very important in this area, which is called a petrotympanic fissure or glossarian fissure, and through this fissure is uh, exiting the uh, horda tympani, uh, and uh, in, uh, and uh, also for the passage of the in, uh, of the anterior tympanic uh, artery. Uh, that's all about the uh, squamous part of the uh, of the uh, uh, the temporal bone. As you see here, we have the uh, other suture, uh, which is uh, depend on the which part is connecting to which part. So it's called uh, mastoid bone or squamomastoid uh, suture, which is the connection of the mastoid process uh, with the squamous part and uh, uh, that's all about the, uh, the squamous part. So uh, the third main part of the uh, temporal bone uh, is tympanic part or sometimes it's called a tympanic bone is uh, this area as you see this is somehow it's a triangular shape and uh, uh, here, together with the part of the squamous part, uh, they are bordering the, this uh, very uh, big opening that you can see is the external acoustic meatus. Uh, and uh, the opening and the beginning of this is called porus acousticus externus, is the beginning, and the meatus is the uh, pathway inside, uh, which is called external acoustic. Uh, meatus. 
So uh, this tympanic uh, bone, it's the external ear of course. Uh, so this um, tympanic bone, it's covering uh, uh, ventrobasal surface of the petrosal bone. So it means that if I remove uh, this part as I explained it to you in the poster, uh, so I will reach to the ventrobasal surface of this uh, petrosal uh, part of the temporal bone. So uh, this uh, tympanic uh, bone or tympanic part, uh, it's uh, uh, making uh, inside the cranially and posteriorly uh, there is a notch which is called the tympanic notch and uh, also inside uh, there is a, a groove or a sulcus which is called tympanic uh, sulcus and uh, it's the place for attachment if I go continue it's a place for the attachment of the tympanic uh, membrane so the, uh, uh, the structure that is separating the uh, external ear uh, from the middle ear so it's the tympanic membrane is attaching to the uh, tympanic uh, sulcus uh, so this, uh, this uh, bone, it's making a bony part uh, of the auditory uh, tube except the superior and the posterior uh, wall of the bony part of the auditory uh, tube. The rest, it's made by this, uh, this um, tympanic part of the temporal uh, bone. So again, uh, between this tympanic uh, bone or tympanic part of the temporal bone with the other structure, there are uh, very important uh, fissure once more. Uh, this uh, fissure, uh, which is called between the squamous part and the tympanic part, uh, is called squamotympanic fissure, is the place for the posterior attachment of the articular capsule of the temporomandibular joint. And as we mentioned, this fissure is subdivided to two fissures by the tegment tympani uh, to the petrotympanic uh, fissure in this area and the petro, uh, petrotympanic fissure and the petrosquamous uh, fissure. Also, the connection of the, uh, of the tympanic bone with the uh, mastoid, uh, mastoid process here uh, that we mentioned that the mastoid process sometimes is discussed as a separate part of the temporal bone. Here we have this uh, groove which is called tympanomastoid groove that here at this region it's the end place of the mastoid canaliculi uh, which the auricular branch of the vagus nerve is uh, exiting from here. So here you can see the uh, external ear or ex uh, porus acousticus externus and inside is the meatus acousticus externus or er external acoustic meatus which is bordered uh, above what the squamous part of the temporal bone and below uh, uh, and anteriorly is by the tympanic uh, part of the temporal bone that you can see uh, here. So uh, the tympanic part it's uh, making a, a bony part of the auditory tube uh, except the superior and posterior uh, part. Uh, so this is uh, important and also here again you can see the uh, non-articular part of the uh, temporal fossa which is located here and uh, there is a fissure here which is called the uh, petrosquamous fissure for the posterior attachment of the articular capsule and uh, here is the uh, the petrotympanic or glossarian uh, fissure so concerning the the uh, here since i have so concerning the squamous part uh, you can see it's the two uh, fossa uh, uh, here and here uh, for the articulation together with the uh, articular tubercle they are making the uh, articular surface for the uh, head of the mandible here as you see and here they make the temporomandibular joint and in maximum opening when it's rotating the head of the mandible the the uh, uh, articular tubercle is stopped it so uh, that's all about the 
uh, tympanic part of the uh, of the temporal bone. Dear student, uh, that's almost all about the uh, very important bone of the neurocranium, which is a temporal bone. Uh, we didn't discuss the details about the inner ear and the middle ear, which is uh, inside uh, of this bone and uh, is going to be discussed uh, at the section of the sense organ. Uh, at the end, I would like to thank my uh, colleague, uh, Dr. Petrashek, for his help. And uh, I would like you uh, to thank you uh, for your attention. And uh, I wish you uh, have a nice day and uh, stay safe and study hard.